evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Common Council for January 19, 2016. Please stand for a brief moment of reflection and a pledge to our plan. I pledge allegiance to the flag for inviting us here uh, tonight to talk about our Vision 2020 capital project. As it specifically relates um, to what you're interested in, I'm sure, in the intermediate school addition that is adjacent to city-owned property. Um, so first, let me just say that um, this project really is a, a K-12 Vision 2020 to improve our academic standing. Our school district has been very challenged with um, report cards uh, that we really want to make sure that we are improving the educational quality for our students and the experience that they have on each of our campuses. Um, hopefully you have uh, seen our latest report card that our high school has received adequate yearly progress. We have turned red X's into green check marks, so that's a good thing. And most notably, our graduation rate has increased from 59% to 77% district-wide. So that's really a big accomplishment, but we say unequivocally, we still have a lot of challenges. We know that each cohort, each class of students is going to present unique challenges, but we know that we can do it and we're going to keep up the progressive work that we've been doing to improve the Hudson City School District for all of our students. Um, besides academically, it's a fa sound financial decision to undergo a capital project at this time. We have retiring debt, and we would like to take advantage of the window of opportunity to capture that and pretty much borrow money at a low rate. 
and really have a big benefit for our students across all of the campuses. Um, so in short, what it entails is a gradual grade level reorganization. So in this 2016-17 school year, we are looking to roll up grade six that is currently housed in the intermediate school up to the junior high school where there is ample room to have grades six, seven, and eight learning together where students aren't either coming or going, coming into seventh grade and leaving in eighth grade, but actually having established a sense of belonging in a school. That would free up space at the intermediate school, so we would undergo uh, substantial uh, renovations to be ready for seven-year-old students, students that have an appropriate learning environment in the intermediate school that are only in grade two. So then in the 2017-18 school year, that building would house grades two through five. The long range plan is to build onto the intermediate school on the south side, so that's as you're looking at the building from Harry Howard Avenue to the right, going towards crosswinds, and that's about 18,000 square feet that we are anticipating needing to move up pre-K through one as early as the 1920 school year or in the 2021 school year, depending on how the project um, progresses. So the long range plan is to reduce our district and right size it due to declining enrollment, that it's not just a Hudson City School District issue, but across New York State, there's declining enrollment. And we want to right size our <coughs> district and take advantage of the space that is open in our buildings and become a two campus district by the year 2020. So that's it in a very quick nutshell because in the interest of time, I would like to really answer questions that you may have as it relates to the city owned property that is directly adjacent to the construction that we are proposing. We don't need the property in order to go forward with our project, but acquiring part of that or all of that city owned property, however we negotiate it, would definitely enhance our project. It would be less costly because we wouldn't necessarily have to go up with a second floor. So we may be able to expand um, you know, horizontally a little bit further instead of using a second floor for our, our vision. So we do want to talk to the city about how we might be able to do that, whether that's with a utility easement or if that's with acquiring the property. Um, and we also know uh, that um, Mr. O'Connor has brought to our attention uh, an erosion issue that we were not aware of. Um, but after organizing a site visit with key people, uh, we really see that there is a problem that is currently on city-owned property. We can't fix what is on city-owned property, but if the school district were to acquire that property, we are interested in improving what is there, um, not just keeping the status quo. So I would really like to open it up for information from the council and any questions that you may have. <coughs> Mr. Friedman? Doctor, thanks for taking the time to come out this evening. My pleasure. Um, if the city were to, to uh, transfer that property that, that right now has been eroded, mm -hmm. uh, would the uh, district commit to remediating it? Yes. Um, and I just want to make sure that I can introduce some people that are here today because it's not just my word, but it's also the word of the Board of Education and others with me here tonight, um, what our plans are. So um, to my right is Maria McLaughlin, president of our Board of Education, and two board members, Sage Carter and Carrie Otte. Also with me is the superintendent of buildings and grounds, George Keeler. Jeff Boudreau, who is a civil engineer with Weston and Sampson. And all the way over to the right, we have John Sharkey from Rhinebeck Architecture, and also an attorney, um, Ginger Benedict, that is with us, also representing the school district. So any questions that you may have, I've got numerous people. Oh, and Samaya. <laughs> Shabazz, I'm sorry. I didn't see you come in and sit on the other side. Thank you. But that's a yes. That's a yes. Okay. <laughs> from all of us that are here tonight. I appreciate it. Yes. Any other questions or concerns? I did put um, a newsletter that will be going out to all taxpayers this week in front of each uh, council member. And there's also um, a pile there for any people in the community that would like to take one as well. But they will also be coming to you in the mail to give you as much information as we can 
Uh, just this evening, we launched a video on our website so that you can learn more about the project, and it's a visual that can help you to understand what the 2020 vision is across the district as well. Any other questions? Mr. Haddad? Uh, yes, I assume that since it's come this far that you probably have some sort of architectural plan or some sort of uh, visual mock-up of the rendering of what it could be or what your options yes. or ideas might be? We have a very preliminary draft because each draft that we ask for costs the district money. And until we know that the taxpayers approve this project, we really don't want to go through unnecessary drafts and revisions. However, we have an idea of the footprint and to make sure that what currently is housed at the John L. Edwards School would comfortably and appropriately fit into the footprint that we are proposing. So that's as far as we have gotten so far with um, the plans. Um, so a follow-up question, would there be, after the taxpayers have decided, would they be allowed to see this plan? Absolutely. Or, or, so we're, Once, no one's allowed to see the plan until? Actually, I think we have I mean, I, this I, evening, if you want to see a preliminary. I, There's I, also I an athletic field yeah. also. Sure. Yeah, yeah, just some, some idea. Absolutely. It's a big bag, I left it in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, he has five renditions, five copies of the same rendition that we currently have that will be put on easels in each one of our main offices of all of our buildings. So we'll share it with you here tonight. It'll be in all of our main offices in every one of our buildings as of tomorrow. And then they are going to move to the polling stations. There's five polling stations. So as people come in to vote, they'll be able to look at what we are proposing for the athletic field as well as the building. <coughs> Um, basically, this is, again, as the superintendent mentioned, this is a very preliminary plan just to get an idea of massing and, and spaces we might want to need. Uh, the front of the building is right here from Howard Howard Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, the main front of the building. The, the shaded area here is where the addition would go. So right now we're showing the addition here and a two-story addition in the back over the old technology wing that was actually designed for a second-story addition. So that could be done there. Um, the shaded areas here are, are for my major renovation, the yellow, and then minor renovation in the building is the light green, but the, the brownish area is where the addition would potentially be. Um, the building's a beautiful building, so we would, if, if there was some opportunity for the district to get the land, we would like to push this addition back and over so that it's not, you know, impeding on the front of that building. That would be the ideal thing, but right now the way the building's designed or preliminary designed, it does fit on the property. And, that's what we have to do until we know what's going to happen. So in the future. you would require the additional land to do a setback or, or make it because you hit it. It is a beautiful yeah. building. It's one of the most elegant buildings oh, in is. the city of Hudson. Yes. And to have new construction right immediately to the south of that would really take away from that building. Right. Yeah, our intent would be to be back at least, you know, 10, 20 feet from the front of this building and have a real low profile addition that would, you know, spread out a little bit more. Is, is there a preliminary elevation? <coughs> no, not at this point. That's I'd really like to see what that would look like. Yeah, I mean, as we go through the process, you know, the design, if the if the land comes about or, or, or other opportunities, the design is going to change quite a bit. And as we go along, we do different elevations and massing. But at this point right now, as, as the superintendent said, it's before the voters vote on it. It doesn't make sense to go through that process. I promise you there'll be a lot of different design options. Sure. <laughs> And we think this is a perfect opportunity for the school district and the city to work collaboratively for some improving um, what our students currently experience. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you uh, I'm Jonathan Lerner. I'm the chair of the Conservation Advisory Council, and I live at 346 Union Street. Um, as I understand it, the piece of city on property that the school district would like to acquire um, <clears throat> is um, upstream of where the current stormwater pipe <coughs> outflow into the ravine is. Is that right? Yes. The, the outflow is not on the piece of property that the district wants to acquire. It's the the pipe takes water from the storm from school district property into city owned land down right. downhill and and if the city 
and the school district arrange for the school district to acquire this piece of property that you're looking at, the outflow will still be beyond debt on city owned land. Not, it's not, it doesn't flow out on the piece of property that you want to acquire. Am I right about that? It could. The, the piece of property that is in discussion that's been proposed has not been defined yet. I see. Okay. Um, it could, and in fact, the actual size of what would be necessary is not defined yet. It kind of depends on a lot of options and a lot of alternatives. Um, okay. And there have been discussions that perhaps um, the property transfer could include part of the outfall, which would allow uh, district funds to be expended to improve it. Because right now, uh, Central school districts and city school districts, by law, have difficulty spending money off of property that they either own or have direct control over. Um, well, I don't, I'm not familiar with the law, so I can't address that. But I, I would just like to say that um, <clears throat> that stormwater pipe might have been state of the art in 1930 when the original building was built. But certainly by the time the recent addition was made, um, engineers and architects were much more conscious of how to handle stormwater. And uh, it seems to me that the fact it still is flowing and creating an erosion pro problem uh, is a result of negligence on the part of the school district. And that, um, however it gets worked out legally and in terms of property transfer, uh, I would consider that the school district has an obligation <coughs> to remediate that erosion downstream. Yes, for Dr. Schillermark. Uh, $20 million expenditure, what is the academic impact to the, to the students of Hudson? Is there any? Oh, yes. Um, what there's, is roughly? Well, most of that project is going towards the academic reorganization of the, of the school district. The athletic field is really just a small portion of the $20 million. But the whole vision is reorganizing our schools, less transitions. We're only one of 57 small city school districts in New York State, which gives us a special designation, but also it, the, the spending formula, the formula that we get from the state is really not in harmony with the challenges that we have in the district. So one of the things that we're looking to improve our district with is less transition, less disruption to our students moving from one school to another. So to go from three transitions from John L. Edwards to the intermediate school and then to the junior senior high campus, it would reduce it to only two transitions, going from the elementary building, which will house pre-K through five, then to the seven, excuse me, through the six through 12 building. So that's one of the academic components that is an improvement to the system that we currently are, are managing. Also to align our curriculum and make sure that our programs, our teachers can talk with each other six through eight. Um, the Common Core uh, learning standards, however you may feel about them, are, are here to stay in some format. And it's imperative that we start to align our curriculum in harmony with that because our six through eight is banded. So it's important for teachers to get students ready for secondary level education, but it's really hard to do that when there's a, a disjointedness between the sixth grade in one building and the seventh through eight being departmentalized in another building. So adjacency amongst teachers, curriculum, and having a, I guess, one step less in moving, changing schools, but there's, there's no increase in any, in any programs for academics, but there's an increase in athletics. Uh, so this will get back to the whole idea of academic development. Mm -hmm. But I think we're doing both. I mean, we need to make sure that we're producing well-rounded students. And some of our students only come to school because they can participate in sports or the arts. I mean, that's all important as well. So we're trying to really broaden the spectrum of what our students' experiences are. And academics is at the forefront of everything that we're doing. But we also, while we're doing this, we can also provide them with a state-of-the-art field that our students can feel the pride of, you know, of practicing and having meets on their own campus instead of being transported to other districts. But you're right. Everything is about aligning the curriculum, having teachers have professional development to improve our programs, to make sure that we're taking care of our students that need intervention services, as well as our students that need to be challenged with enriching services. So it's really a broad vision of what we're trying to do in the district through a capital project such as this. 
And I will reiterate what John said. I am thrilled you're here tonight. It's, I mean, I'd like to see more of this between the schools. The well, unfortunately, our board meetings are Monday <laughs> evening, so we were thrilled when you had a meeting on a Tuesday and that we were invited that a number of us could come. So thank you. Thank you. Well, can I just add, you know, Rick, I, I, my, my, I, I come to these issues with this, I think, with the same filter that you do. Um, and I spent an awful lot of my life in academic uh, institutions, and, uh, and 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 I and I prize academic uh, attainment. Obviously, somebody who's you know pursued it into my thirties. Um, on but the other hand, I think what what the um, superintendent saying is very important, and, and I I am in this in the school one day a week um, for at least you know a couple of hours every week, and. Um, a lot of the students who go um, aren't necessarily interested in becoming engineers or mathematicians or computer scientists, and that's really where everything is pushing them. And anything that we do that can show them that there are other paths to success, I think, is really important, particularly for students who don't prize or don't find the academic route uh, interesting or easy for them. And the other side of that is. Uh, and you know it's in the, the newsletter that we saw here, and I also learned this from from, from talking to Dan and Mary, who were very helpful to me to understand this issue. Is that um, a lot of the students who go to that school feel uh, that, you know the condition of the school is a reflection of our community's importance that we put on the students, and when the school isn't up to snuff, and we're the only, one of only two schools that don't have a, a track that can be used for inter intramural sports. Um, the students feel that we don't care. And I, and I think that that's, um, I, I, I never, you know, this is something I learn. Every, every year you do this job, you learn something, and, and this is something I've learned, and I think it's important. And I think, I think making sure that the students here in this Hudson City School District have um, good, good facilities is very important to their academic and their overall development. I totally agree. I just want to, you know, my question is always about I, balance. I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't disagree. And I've also I found out that we will have a new soccer field in the middle of this, which is mm -hmm. fantastic news, you know. And I also want to say that even though we are very proud of our graduation rate, we know that we have really improved it. It's not just about graduating students. We are really looking at graduating students that are college, career, and life ready. And that means something different for each student, but we need to make sure that we're motivating our students, that they can come to school and hook them of why it's important to come to school and also show them the academic side. Um, if, they're, if they're motivated in sports, they come to school for sports, that's motivation. But we can also show them other things that they can have an, you know, a, a fruitful life outside of our walls. So it's really about post-secondary education or going into their career of choice. So we really want to open up the pathways that our students can choose from, and this is just one way of helping us to right-size the district and focus on what's really important. The um, students, when they participate in the um, uh, after-school activities like sports and that, mm -hmm. they really have to keep their grades up oh, yeah. to maintain, they have to maintain a certain grade level to stay on that sports. Right. Plus, you see in the papers constantly all of the uh, students getting athletic scholarships, mm -hmm. making them go, having them get that benefit and to move on farther. I mean, we have an athletic code of conduct which mm -hmm. tells students that they have to have a certain grade level and they need to be in attendance in order to be able to stay on the team. So, you know, there is incentives for the students. Um, so you're right, and whether it's you know athletics or being a part of the arts, it's it's really important that students have those experiences. Uh, what would be what would you be um, in this athletic field? Is that would that consist of a track and field as mm -hmm. well? Yeah, it's a 400 meter track. So right now the school doesn't have a track no. team, so that would. We have a track team, but we have to transport them to another school district in order to practice and go to meets. We have a cinder track right now that's not usable. It's not safe for our students. So inside of that, we would have a football slash soccer field, and also we would have shot put and all of the others so that we could have a patroon meet at our school as well. And I believe we might have that with us as well. If you want to give a map of the, to if you wanted to, to have another visual of what we're looking at, <laughs> we just happen to have another one with us. <laughs> this will also be available in the main offices and going to the polling booths as well. Yeah, it's very preliminary, just a 
400 meters. Give you an idea of the size of the track. And I promise you it won't be this color. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's the back of the school. If you come down this way, the track would be here along the back. It would be uh, the track here. We'd have pole vault, uh, triple jump, shot put discus. Um, we're, we're right now showing bleachers on this side here and a press box there. So it'll be parking, it'll be handicap access back to the fields. And, uh, Will football be played there? Yes, football, so soccer. Football, yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yep. And, you so, know, this is a win win for the community as well. What a beautiful view from that track for the community to be able to exercise and, and use a piece of our district so that um, everybody can enjoy it and benefit from this facility. It's Union Street. And my question relates more to the longer term aspects of the school district's capital plan, specifically the possible sale of the JL Edwards School, a publicly funded building. The size and central location of the school make it potentially extremely valuable community asset. And one obvious use for it would be affordable housing. My concern is that the city and community have some control over how such a significant public property might be repurposed. And I'd like to know what kind of input the city would have into what becomes of it. Well, certainly as we go down to a two campus district, we are interested in either leasing or selling the John L. Edwards School. It's not part of the capital project right now, but obviously that's what the forward plan would be. Um, you know, again, we're wanting to work collaboratively. We want to listen to the community. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of purposes that that district building can be used for that could benefit the city, whether it's, you know, city offices or it's affordable housing, that's up to uh, the people that are interested in the property and also, you know, to the, the city and what we're looking forward is to. It, as a public building, is there any requirement for a referendum such as the one next month? Um, is, there, is there actually any sort of... Oh, yes. Yes. So, okay. for example, the referendum that we're having on February 9th where uh, the public will decide <clears throat> whether they're in favor of this capital project or not, we also have the sale of the Clovrick building. We own a, a school building in Clovrick that will be up for sale. We cannot sell a school building without taxpayer approval. So there's two propositions on the referendum. The first one is the sale of the Clovrick building, and the second one is the Vision 2020 capital project. So if John L. Edwards were to be sold, we can accept a purchase offer, but the taxpayers would ultimately decide on whether we would sell that property. It would have to go to referendum vote. Thank you. You're welcome. Why not we, it will be ready to sell? Why isn't it what? When, 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 would when, it be ready to when would we be ready to sell John L. Edwards building? We wouldn't be able to move all of the students out of that building and into the intermediate school mm -hmm. um, until the 1920 school year at the earliest. Mm -hmm. And depending on construction and you know unforeseen things that you might come across when you're constructing, we also have to look that it could possibly be September of 2020 at the latest. We're not going to move students mid-year, so it's September 19. Uh, 19 or September 20. Okay. Don't you also have your tenants in that building? We district? do. We do. We have Columbia Opportunities is um, leasing some rooms at the John Edwards School. We have um, two Head Start programs there, and we also have a family literacy program that is housed at John Edwards. Are any of those long term leases, or are they one, two years? No, years they're one or two years. Um, you know, would we like them to continue to be within our school district? Yes. If we can find the space, but I don't know that the school district can actually build space for another organization. But certainly, if we have room available, we would allow them to, to continue to lease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for the so opportunity to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of On to our first resolution of the evening, appointing commissioner, commissioners of deeds. President Desipano. Aye. Helen Donahue. Aye. Frieza. Aye. Gariga. Aye. Adet. Aye. Pete. Aye. Mia. Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Hara. Aye. Rector. Aye. Number 
two, authorizing a transfer of funds to cover unanticipated vacation sellback for personnel in the city clerk's office for the fiscal year 2015. Roll call vote. President Estefano. Aye. Alderman Donahue. Aye. Friedman. Okay. Yes. Kariga. Aye. Haddad. Aye. Kate. Aye. Mia. Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Hara. Aye. Rector. Aye. Scalera. Aye. Carried. And number three, authorizing amending the 2016 budget to accurately distinguish between IDA and city private revenues and disbursements. The city treasurer is here this evening. If, um, if she'd like to give us a quick explanation of this resolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was what you'd like to. Okay. May I have an introduction in a second, please? transfer of funds between retirement mm -hmm. accounts for fiscal year 2015. May I have an introduction in a second? Mm -hmm. Tiffany? Priscilla? Roll call vote. President Estefano? Aye. Alderman Donahue? Aye. Friedman? Aye. Kariga? Aye. Haddad? Aye. Key? Aye. Mia? Aye. Aye. O'Hara? Aye. Aye. Number five, authorizing 2016 by department petty <coughs> cash funds. May I have an introduction and a second, please? Yeah. Lauren, roll call vote, please. President Estefano. Aye. Alderman <coughs> Nottingham. Aye. Friedman. Aye. Gariga. Aye. Haddad. Aye. Key. Mia? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Hara? Aye. Rector? Aye. And Scalera? Aye. Carried. Number six, authorizing transfers within the fire department accounts for the fiscal year 2015. May I have an introduction in the second? Henry and Robert? Roll call vote. President Estefano? Aye. Alderman <coughs> Donahue? Aye. Friedman? Aye. Eureka? Aye. Haddad? Aye. Key? Aye. Mia? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Hara? Aye. Rector? Aye. Escalera? Aye. Perry. Number seven, authorizing transfer of funds within the police department accounts for the fiscal year 2015. May I have an introduction and a second, please? Henry, Priscilla, roll call vote. Can I have a question, please? Okay, um, maybe I, I didn't understand, but maybe not. I see the um, resolution seven and eight, utility gasoline, that's both are from the police department. Is there a different account or different thing? <coughs> so utilities and gas, gasoline, the seven and eight, and from 31 That's it's one. come. It's coming from that account to two different different items. Two two different resolutions. What is the 
question. Of course it is. Uh, resolution 7 and resolution 8, I'm asking the question, utilities and gasoline, it's a two different, the same, it's police department gasoline. You can put it in one, Maybe in one account. account. It will be one account or a different account or what? It's the same, it's the same source it's five of the a, funds it's to it's be a, transferred to different places. Awesome. And it just happens to have a, a surplus There's money in the utilities to, to and gasoline line. Okay. <clears throat> Roll call vote, please. President Testapano. Aye. Solomon Dine. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Aye. Alderman Friedman's words, if I can stay together myself with a cold I got, and, and appreciate those words and, and agree with them totally. Uh, the problem I'm having is that I talk to a lot of people, and this is the best kept secret in all of the city of Hudson. And you have three weeks to go before this referendum. You don't have a second chance. So as elected officials, if you agree with this referendum, even if you disagree, but whatever it is, you have a responsibility to meet with your constituents, to get your constituents aware of what's happening on February the 9th and to let them know that their vote is very important. So uh, I would just ask you, please, I mean, it's that important, I think, to the city of Hudson. I think it's important to our, certainly our, 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 our students. Appreciate it. I have a question for Maria. Would this uh, meeting that's taking place on the 9th, is there flyers printed out that are going out mail to the students for the parents. That newsletter is going out to all taxpayers this week. 
Um, our website is full of information. We're on Facebook and Twitter and, and getting the word out as much as we can as a school district, but we do appreciate your help. I do want to say on Monday, January 25th, from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the John L. Edwards School, we have open voter registration. So if you know of people that need to register to become voters, they can do that at John L. Edwards School on January 25th from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And the community conversations, we have a community conversation tomorrow night at John L. Edwards from 6 to 7. Again, the following Wednesday, Wait, June 20, January 25th, January 25th, John L. Edwards okay. is the open voter registration. Okay. But every Wednesday before the vote, so tomorrow evening, January 20th, then Wednesday, January 27th, and then Wednesday, February 3rd, we're having open community conversations where people can learn more about the capital project at John L. Edwards School beginning at 6 o'clock. Uh, this video will be on um, Mid Hudson Cable Vision this Friday at 7 p.m. and succeeding Fridays. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Henry, <laughs> Tiffany, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed?